The GeniePad handset is switched on using the on button here. Press it once, powers the unit on and the unit is now ready for use. The SIM card would go in the base of the unit and also when I need to recharge the re onboard rechargeable battery I plug the unit in on the base. Now the unit is switched on I can see the LCD screen at the top and below that I've got the range of buttons which I'm now going to use to input the data. So on the left I have a green button which I would use to indicate a true or a yes answer and on the right and the red button to indicate a false or a no answer. Further down we have a range of buttons here, a keypad which goes from 1 down to 0 and 1 to 6 also doubles up as A to F if I want to do a multiple choice or a multiple mark type question. You will see there's also text on here just like a mobile phone so if I'm texting in an answer I would use these buttons just like I do on a mobile phone where one press here would be A, two presses B and three presses C. If I'm putting a numeric response in then I need to press the send button up here as the unit won't know when I've finished making the input. I'll always be reminded of that on the slide that's being presented to me anyway. If I've allowed my user to then I can delete an answer by pressing the delete key and if I need to ask for help then I press the question mark button here. The delta key here is used for programming the handset and also used to scroll between standard, predictive or number texting. Down at the bottom we also have the ability to show a decimal point and a fraction and the on button also doubles up to show a negative number. This is the teacher handset identified by the fact that it's a different colour and also the markings on the keys are slightly different. This is because I can use this to remotely control parts of the software when I'm presenting in Classcom. The teacher unit is also powered on by the button at the base here which you will see on the left hand side and the right hand side buttons with arrows. These allow me to navigate through the slides in the presentation either going to the next question with the double arrow or the next answer with the single arrow. You'll also see a button with play on which allows me to play the game and pick which would pick a student's name from random and display it on the screen. The green button on the teacher handset allows me to control when my students can actually send data into the receiver. So I can pause the slideshow, talk about the question and when I'm ready press the green button which then activates the receiver and allows people's votes to actually be received. The false button does the opposite and stops voting. So again I have control with the teacher handset. The small button with the graph on allows me to pull up a graph of the results that I've just pulled in from the handsets and display them in various forms. The receiver allows all the data that's being sent by the handsets to be collected by the laptop or PC that it's connected to. On the back of the receiver is the USB here where I plug in the lead and connect that to the PC or laptop. I know that the receiver is switched on because a red LED light will appear and glow inside. The receiver will pick up responses from within a range of 100 meters and can be placed anywhere within a room.